Welcome back to Photoshop. So today I'm going to show you how to use the 3D filter to add some dynamic contrast and definition to your images inside of Photoshop. Now, don't be scared away by three dimensional. And if you have no idea how to use it, this process is super, super simple and easy. And we're gonna create an action so it will just run through. The cool thing about this is, is really you're basically using the same settings. So once you've done it, you can just run the action. And then if you need to adjust the amount, you can easily just slide the opacity out and that will kind of fix the problem or issue where it might be a little bit too much on your image. So this is really cool. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to drag my actions over here and we're gonna just go ahead and start an action. Come up here to new action and I will call this e D map contrast because even though it is adding a three-dimensional map to it it's actually going to be adding contrast as well i'm going to leave this in my default actions i'm going to leave the function key as none and i'm not going to assign a color to this go ahead and just hit record and i'm going to move this off the screen because we don't need it at this time now the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to duplicate our background so i'm going to hit command j on a mac and it's control j on a PC and now we have a duplicated background. Then we're gonna come up here to the filter. Not this, we wanna to go to filter, 3D, and then we wanna generate normal map. And now what this is gonna do, it's gonna look really weird because it's actually gonna turn this image into a three-dimensional sphere and it can be difficult to kind of see what's going on now the first thing that we want to do is everything is down at zero and we want to take the detail which is going to give us the definition and increase that up all the way to 120. And that's going to bring in the detail to this image. Now the next thing that you have here is blur. Now what blur is doing is it's just kind of blurring out areas that really shouldn't have any detail. Items like hairs might get eliminated. So I wouldn't wanna set the blur too high or it starts to do some funky things to your image. Now, this is something you should try though. Go ahead, run this process with a blur at zero, at three, at six, at nine, at 12, at 20, 100, just so you can see what the image is doing. So we're gonna go ahead and I usually set mine around six and that works good for this image and then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and you can see right here here's that three-dimensional map I wanted to create I'm going to go ahead and just close this because we don't need it anymore and this is the definition that it's going to be adding to the image it's a little bit 3d but it appears in the image really is contrast you'll see what I mean when we get to it now the next thing that we need to do and I'm going to apply this directly to the layer so I'm gonna hit Command U, and Command U brings up the hue saturation, and I'm just gonna go ahead and dial all that hue saturation out of this image. I'm gonna hit Cancel. You can also hit Command Shift U to desaturate, and that would be Control Shift U on a PC. That's totally desaturating color from this image. And then we're going to invert it, so I'm gonna hit Command I or Control I on a PC. And then we're just gonna go ahead and change the blending mode to either soft light or overlay. In this case, I usually prefer soft light versus overlay, but you can go through and see what the different ones do. But basically, remember these are our contrast blending modes. Soft light is gonna be a, a less intense version of overlay. And in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and use soft light. So I will turn this off and on, off and on. You can see that dynamic contrast and that dimension it's adding to our image. Now the problem with contrast is it can make the image darker a little bit more contrasty. We're gonna make a simple curve to kind of fix some of that. So we're gonna go ahead and make a curve and then I'm gonna make a clipping mask. I'm gonna hold the Alt key and click in between the two layers. This means that it's clipping down and this curve adjustment is only gonna to apply to this layer. It's not gonna to apply to the background layer, which is what we want. 
And then what I'm going to do is come down here and raise this up. This is just lowering the contrast of the image. I don't want it that high. And then we're just going to kind of open that up and we will just move the highlights. We're just making a subtle little curve here to kind of bring back the values as to where they were before. So you can see what this is doing. This is just bringing that back a little bit to where it is. And that is basically it. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to hit stop and that's going to apply the action. Now, remember, if you want to stop and do stuff in the 3D map, you can easily tick this box out here, but we're not going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to drag this off to the side. And what we will do is we will select both of these layers and hit Command G, which is group. What I will do is turn this on and off and we'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see this. So I'm going to turn this off, on, off, on. And you can see the dynamic contrast and dimension it's adding to your image. And you can use these in portraits and landscapes, whatever you want. There's a few different ways to basically do this same exact thing. This is just a newer, different way to add dimension to your image. So what we're going to do is turn this back on. Now we're going to switch over here to this picture or photograph of this guy. Now, a lot of times when you have older people and you accentuate the wrinkles, it can add some visual interest to them. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you how this action is going to work. So we're going to come over here and we're going to go up to 3D map contrast. And I'm just going to hit play and that's going to run through. And bam, just like that, you can see it's created all those levels. And now if I make select both of these, hit Command G for group, and I will zoom into his face here, you'll be able to see. Now this is shot with a really shallow depth of field. We have to really look at the aspects where there really is texture. So you can see here, we're adding some definite texture, adding more dimension to his face, make it visually a little bit more interesting as far as we go. Now it is making this image a little bit more contrasty. And this is the cool thing about adjustment layers. It's just because you apply adjustment layer doesn't mean that you have to keep it. So what we can do is we can easily come in here. I can raise the contrast in this a little bit and take some more of that out to sort of compensate for how much we're doing. Now, just like I said before, we can also come into this layer and we can reduce the opacity. So the opacity being reduced is going to lessen the effect of this kind of 3D map that we apply to the image. If you want to reduce the amount of contrast and dimension that we added, you're simply going to lower the opacity and that's going to take some of that out of this image. Well, that's the process of using this really cool 3D filter inside of Photoshop. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.